Hello everyone. Work has resumed at Sub-Zero Labs, and I just wanted to show you what I've been up to here. The distillation tube, which is simply mounted to the spout, glued with a couple of copper fittings, and a quarter-inch NPT nipple fitting with a barb, to a small piece of copper tube, to another cut, to another uh, barb fitting, and to the edge of this 12 inch long PVC tube that is one and a half inches inside diameter. Let me, uh, go to macro mode here, and I'll show you the bronze wool that is stuffed inside the tube. All right. This is the poor man's uh, PWM that I cre created a little earlier. It is a halfway bridge rectifier, which uh, once I bring the kettle up to boiling temperature, I'll just flip it to this position, and that cuts the amount of voltage in half and the amount of current in half, which puts the uh, amount of wattage into the kettle from 1500 watts to 375. So it should boil away at a very uh, even pace. The collection vessel down here will simply catch the drippings. Uh, the expected harvest rate is about one six thousandth of the amount of water that I boil off. So for every 10 gallons, I expect to harvest maybe one ounce of fluid. Um, over here, in these five gallon drums, I have 10 gallons of what was melted snow that is now frozen again. It's taking quite a while to, to thaw out. <laughs> you can see that uh, it is still quite a bit of ice in there. But I will pour some out and I will begin the, the boil off process. This right here is the containment vessel for the plasma generator. And right here is a little ceramic bead that I bought off of eBay with a small hole in the middle. And this will simply go into the side and I will feed my high voltage through an electrode in the middle of that and put a piece of stainless steel screen around the back of the tube. These, uh, this tube will be closed off and sealed with neoprene gaskets and a couple of end plates and some threaded metal rod that will be uh, fastened through some holes drilled through the corners of the end plates. This is a little HHO torch that was sent to me by D3 and I am uh, extremely grateful for this because I'll be using this to braise a little bit of palladium, palladium wire which I uh, cannot show you right now but I'll be brazing a little bit of palladium wire to the end of the copper electrode that will go through the ceramic insulator into the containment vessel for my plasma experiments. Hey guys, just want to show you the uh, D3 torch in action off the zero cell with a with the tall bubbler going. Got about 14 volts and 18 amps. I don't know what the actual output is. I know it's fairly efficient. And that's a decent flame, but I want to show you up close. The actual hot spot is only about, I want to say, an eighth of an inch from the MIG tip. That's where the real hot spot is. Okay, I'm going to shut it off now with the valve. Make a little click. Turn off the juice. Here is the Lexan cylinder with the ceramic insulator glued to the hole that I drilled in the side. The diameter just happens to be exactly the size of a piece of 14 gauge copper wire. 
and with the aid of the HHO torch, I think you can see that I took a small center punch, put this piece of copper wire in the vise, I filed it flat, took the center punch, put a little prick mark in the very end of it, took, took the uh, HHO torch, melted a piece of palladium wire into a tiny small bead, set the bead with tweezers onto the end of the copper wire, and I literally brazed it to the end of the copper wire. That will be assembled through there and just flush with the opening inside. And I'm just going to set it inside the little dimple that I created with a 16th inch drill bit. There it is. You can see it sitting on top there. And I need to aim the flame straight down to prevent from blowing the palladium bead right off the top of the piece of copper. And I need to go slowly because the melting point of the palladium is just slightly lower than the melting point of the copper. And there's a breakdown point after the palladium melts, where the copper just starts to disintegrate. I need to go very slowly here. There it goes. And that's it. Palladium bead. now welded right to the tip and braised right to the tip of the copper. And there you have it. I can now take this and insert it into the ceramic uh, insulator. One final note before I go inside. I just wanted to show you how the palladium tip copper wire slipped into the ceramic insulator. A snug fit. Haven't decided what I'm going to use for an adhesive. And I plan to just let it sit just like that. With just just the tip exposed, the tip of the palladium. Yeah, I guess that's about as good as I can get it. But you get a, you get the idea of what I'm going after here. I'm hoping that the <coughs> ceramic insulator will dissipate enough of the heat away from the tip to keep the palladium intact on the copper wire. I apologize for the shaky video work, but I've been on here for a while and it's freaking cold out here, so I'm shaking, literally shivering. So, going inside now. I think it's enough for one night.